Thank you so much. And we are now coming to our last presenter of today's event, um, Scott Nishimoto. Scott is the executive director of Seeds of Peace, a nonprofit based in Honolulu, Hawaii, whose mission is to raise peace building leaders. Prior to this role, Scott served as the vice president at Abilities Unlimited, a local nonprofit that served adults with disabilities. He's also the father of a four-year-old and a six-month-old who never fail to keep him on his toes. And Scott, I turn the, uh, the, the microphone over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Reva. Can you hear me okay? Am I coming through okay? Yes, you are. Awesome, awesome. All right, aloha everyone. Um, like Reba said, my name is Scott Nishimoto and I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, I know the day is winding down for many of you, but it's actually just beginning here in Hawaii. Uh, so I will say good morning to you all. Um, while my full-time job is being a dad, like Reba mentioned, my other full-time job is to serve as the executive director of a local Hawaii-based nonprofit called Seeds of Peace. And we were founded by renowned peace builders, Dr. Kerry Yurosevich and Dr. Maya Sutoro, um, both of whom you, you may know. Um, and that's Seeds of Peace, as you can see in, in my name on my screen, that's Seeds with a C, so C-E-E-D-S. And it's a play on words that combines the metaphor of a seed, so growth, um, as well as the fact that so many of our core values that we teach happen to begin with the letter C. So values like courage and compassion, conflict resolution, critical thinking, collaboration, commitment, and connection. And we teach and model these values through a number of different platforms in our community. We have professional development workshops for uh, public school teachers. We have youth action planning workshops. We have school-based trauma-sensitive programming. Um, and then we have cohorts focusing on self-care and well-being, um, as well as some community talk story events like this one. So I wanted to focus the next 10 to 15 minutes um, specifically on the topic of connection. And we find that everything we do as peace builders seems to kind of come back to this value of connection. Um, and as we think about what's going on in the world, um, war and violence, they are products of a lack of connection and often the fear of making connection with the other. Um, discrimination, it's a product of a refusal to connect and instead come to um, these baseless assumptions and conclusions prior to connecting. And then that sense of lack of uh, peace within oneself, that's often the product of a lack of connection with oneself and a lack of connection with others, um, because almost all of us need that feeling of interconnectedness um, in order to, to survive and thrive. So how do we build this connection? Um, there is no simple equation. I wish there was. Um, I wish it was that easy. But I would like to share what I've learned is a great place to start. Um, it's a process which I hope you all can adopt in your own families and in your own work and in your own communities. Um, and this process is called guts on the table, guts on the table. So first, a little bit of context. Um, I learned this process from a very well-known process designer and community activist and facilitator here in Hawaii. Her name is Antipua Nani Burgess. Um, she's, she's quite well known here, here in Hawaii, and she has been involved in some of the most tense, high profile mediations here in Hawaii, um, where locals and Native Hawaiians have had to go up against very powerful groups like the U.S. military, um, in other cases against, you know, billionaire land developers who want to want to build on the land here. Um, and this process, which she calls guts on the table, has been used to begin these mediation sessions between these powers. But also uh, on a smaller level, um, it's used as a dinner conversation, dinner table conversation starter, as well as a way for um, elementary kids to introduce themselves. So it's very universal in that sense. Um, Antipua explains that the purpose of this activity is to help participants think from their gut. So Antipua explains, your gut is the deepest place from which you think. It's a place where your mind, your heart, your intuition and experience all come together. It's a place where your mana or, or power or your spiritual core lives. It's an exercise designed to help participants get deeper, faster. So guts on the table, this is what it looks like. So Antipua begins facilitation sessions by asking those in the room to share three stories. 
and I'm sorry, I should have made a little slideshow so I could show this to you on the screen, but um, maybe you can just take notes or email me after. Um, but she asked those to share, those in the room to share three stories. The first story is the story of your names, all of your names. So Auntie Poole explains that in modern times, we usually introduce ourselves with just our first names and leave out all of the other names which contain so much of our personal and family histories. So this is your opportunity to tell the story of how you are named um, and who named you, uh, the meaning of your names and how you feel about your names. And when you tell the story of your names, you tell the story of your people, um, you tell the story of your family, um, and you tell that story about how you feel about, about your people and your family. So that's story number one. The second story uh, she asked everyone to share is the story of your community. Um, and that's however one decides to define their community. Um, and Antipo explains that when people tell the story of their community, they tell the story of how they live as part of a group. So that's the second story. The third story she asked everyone to share is the story of your gifts. Um, so she explains that this is the, usually the most difficult story to tell um, and that we as a society, we too often feel that when we talk about our gifts that we're gonna come across as bragging, um, but the emphasis should be on sharing your, your gifts, not your skills, not your degrees, not your job titles, your gifts. Um, and we want you to think really hard about what your family or your organization or your, your company or your community um, would be like if it were gift-based rather than skill-based, okay? So just to recap, um, three stories, the story of your names, the story of your community, and the story of your gifts. And that's how she starts every single meeting. Okay, so when, uh, I guess because I never wanna ask others to do something I'm not willing to do myself, I will put my guts on the table first. And while I'm sharing, um, I'm gonna count on at least one or two of you, depending on time, to volunteer to share theirs next. Um, and I just wanna say, typically we are actually in a room together and we're pairing up or going into to triads. Um, but in, in lieu of that, I'm just gonna ask for, for a volunteer to, to share theirs, okay? So first, the story of my names. Uh, my first name is Scott, and as normal and as common and as maybe boring of a name that that is, um, there is a story behind it. Uh, my dad is a big basketball fan, and the year I was born, um, there was a, a rookie coming into the NBA. His name was Scotty Pippen, um, and, and obviously my dad wasn't quite the, the scholar of the family, but he loves sports, and that's one of his gifts. He can strike up a conversation with anyone um, at any time, often through sports. Um, so that, that first name does have a lot of meaning to me. Um, my middle name is Tetsuji, which in Japanese means compassionate philosopher. Um, and you probably guessed it. My mom, um, some would say maybe the wiser, the, the deeper thinking parent of the two um, came up with this name. Um, she wanted me to be kind. She wanted me to be a thinker. She wanted me to solve problems with my mind and my heart rather than my fist. Um, so I've always tried to live up to that middle name. My last name is Nishimoto, which means Western base. Um, we've heard that it's a very common name in Hiroshima, which is where both branches of my family come from. Um, and I always think it's just kind of fitting that, that a family that comes from Hiroshima, which is you know ground zero to the atomic bomb that ended World War II, um, is, is so devoted to peace as we are. Okay, so that's the story of my name, the story of my community. Um, you know, I change the story of my community every time I do this exercise. And today I will tell the story of my neighborhood. Um, so my neighborhood is very, uh, it's a very interesting cross section of Hawaii. Many of the homes here are, are multi-generational, including my home. Um, so I live with my Japanese grand aunt upstairs. Uh, we have an African-American single mom renting the floor below us. Across the street, a huge house with four generations of native Hawaiians. Down the street, more affluent folks. Uh, we have a couple of Caucasian doctors from the continent. There's a lawyer and a judge next door. Um, there's retired school teachers next door to them. Um, and, and yeah, it, it's really cool. Recently, me and my four-year-old, we've been walking the neighborhood and, and we share her artwork with them. And in return, they share fruit from their trees. 
And as I'm explaining this, I feel like I'm painting this picture perfect neighborhood in so many ways. Um, it's very harmonious, it's a melting pot, diverse in income and culture. Um, but at the same time, I remind myself that we're the lucky ones and just a few miles away, there are families, um, native and immigrant alike, um, who are living paycheck to paycheck in 200 square foot studios. And just a few miles down from there towards the ocean, there's uh, several homeless encampments as Hawaii is home to one of the highest homeless, homelessness per capita rates in the nation. Um, so that's part of my community as well. That's part of my neighborhood as well. And that, um, that's why I feel this responsibility to take care of our community. So that's the story of my community. And finally, the story of my gift. Um, I would say that my greatest gift is my ability to make my kids laugh. So as Reva mentioned, I've got a four-year-old and a six-month-old. Um, and I know that seems like kind of a trivial gift, but um, let me tell you why that I think that is my most treasured gift. Um, so there's this recent study here in Hawaii that showed that 42% of Native Hawaiian freshman females have considered self-harm. Um, again, 42% of Native Hawaiian freshman females have considered self-harm. And as I look at my daughter, um, who is a Native Hawaiian female, um, I am terrified for her um, and terrified for her peers. And, um, you know, I'm going to do all that I can to ensure that she's she's resilient and she's loved and that our community around her loves her. But in the end, I'm well aware that it might be my ability to make her laugh, whether she's a four-year-old or a 14-year-old. Um, and, and that might be what she leans on at times. So um, I'm glad that I feel like I'm gifted at that. Okay, so those are my three stories um, that tell uh, often here in Hawaii in these facilitating facilitated sessions, that's kind of how we introduce ourselves, um, typically much more abridged versions, depending on how many people there are. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited that I was able to share that with you folks. And in the spirit of making this as interactive as possible, um, like I said, I'd love to invite um, at least one person, um, Reva, I think we have time for one person at least, right, um, to put yeah. their guts on the table. Cool. Yes, and I think Natasha was volunteering to put her guts on the table. So Natasha, if you're there, yeah, unmute yeah. yourself and go for it. Uh, hi, Reva. Hi, Scott. Can you hear me? Yes, yes absolutely. Okay, thanks. So I was thinking to type it, but I won't. I love this exercise. Thank you for that. So I wrote a little bit about um, about my name. And it's interesting because my background is Indian, but um, I was born and raised in Canada, um, confusing a lot of people because when they meet me, they think I'm Russian and, and I do have a Russian name. So that's the name part of it. And uh, the community I belong to, I did live, I've traveled quite a bit. And and spent most of my adult life trying to retrieve my language and culture and feel connected as a global citizen so I can contribute back to where my parents hail and also work towards helping and contributing back to my community here in Canada, which gave my parents their dreams and subsequently me and my siblings who are really, really comfortable here. Um, the other part of my community is I have a degree in Japanese history, so interesting that I got this exercise from you, but um, I studied Japanese uh, history and language in UBC. I started at U of A in Edmonton, but at UBC in Vancouver, and then traveled and lived in Japan for three different times, but the longest time was outside Osaka in a rural town. So I have a host families, four of them really close to me, and feel really connected to the spirituality of um, of Japanese culture, connection to nature. So I got a lot out of that from my university. Um, and I'd say my gift is that being very comfortable wherever I am and not really feeling a sense of loss when I, when I move or when I try to reroute myself somewhere. So it's just a very adaptable kind of resilient personality, seeing my parents disconnected, but then reconnected to different places. So thank you, that's it. Thank you so much, Natasha. Thanks for sharing that story or those stories. So 
Um, I'm glad I was at least able to demonstrate that. And Natasha, thank you so much for volunteering and, and putting your, your guts on the table. Um, you know, I'm really grateful for this opportunity. And whenever I participate in guts on the table, either as a facilitator or, or as someone in the room, joining the room, um, I'm always reminded that this too is peace building. You know, peace building isn't only um, big talks with, with big world leaders. Um, this is peace building as well. And I just wonder sometimes, you know, imagine if, if world leaders put the effort in connecting this way before these big, big meetings um, and understanding each other this way. And imagine if elementary children were accustomed to introducing themselves this way as, as kids and, and later on as adults. Um, so um, I, I envision a more peaceful future um, using this as a tool, um, one of many tools that we need. Um, so please, please, please consider using guts on the table or a variation of it um, if you wish. Um, use it at your dinner tables with your kids and, and your spouses and your friends. Um, use it in your classrooms with your students. Uh, use it in your communities. Use it in your neighborhoods. Um, and use it as a way to, to build this connection with those who maybe you typically wouldn't have built connection otherwise. Okay. Um, and again, keep in mind how versatile this is as a tool. Um, it is not just for big conversations. Um, it's for little ones as well at the dinner table or, or in, a, in a preschool classroom. Um, so yeah, that's all I've got. Um, please feel to reach out to me at, I'm gonna throw my email in the chat if that's okay. Um, that, that Nishimoto at seedsofpeace.org. So feel free to reach out to me. Check out our website, seedsofpeace.org. Uh, take a look at some of the, the great work we're doing here in Hawaii and um, maybe soon to be beyond Hawaii as well. Um, happy to speak further about what we do. Um, but thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, thank you, Riva, for inviting me. Uh, thank you, Scott. It's always a, uh, a wonderful time to, to be able to, to hear you and to hear about the work that, that your community is, is involved in.